In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create toolpaths for the spindle that you can see on the screen at the moment. This is the follow-up video to the how to model a simple spindle for rotary machining video. And in this video, we will show you how to create toolpaths for the spindle you can see here. So first thing we need to do is we need to load the file from the previous video. So let's go up to file and we'll go to open. And we need our rotary spindle file here. So let's just double left mouse click that to open that up. So with our file set up from a previous video, we can have a look at now creating some toolpaths for our spindle. So let's pop over to the toolpath menu by clicking this button just here. And the first thing we need to do is check our material setup. So let's go up to this button here and click on set. Now the first thing we have is the diameter of our uh, cylinder here, which is four inches. The XY datum will be the bottom left. Now in this case, I'm using the center of the cylinder as my Z0. And for the model position in material, uh, currently my model is actually two inches, which is the same as our diameter of our stock that we're using. Now if your model was less than the thickness of the material, then you need to position the model within the cylinder, leaving a gap outside or inside of the model. Next, I need to specify the rapid Z gaps above material for uh, the clearance, I'm going to go for uh, 0.5 and for the plunge, I am going to go for 0.25. And then for the home start position, I'm leaving X and Y at zero. But for the Z gap above material, this must be at least half the thickness of your cylinder plus the highest of our rapid Z gap. So uh, we can make sure that we can clear the block itself. So I'm going to set this to 0.25 and then when we're happy with our settings, we can click OK. So the first toolpath we're actually going to look at is the 3D roughing toolpath to, to hog out most of the material that we want to get rid of. So the first thing I will do is go up to the Layers tab at the top here, go and double left mouse click on this page icon for 3D boundary so those vectors are selected. Then with that in mind, I can go over to the uh, 3D roughing toolpath on the right hand side here and let's open that form up. Now first we're presented with a tool. Now I do actually want to use a core and chain mill here, but if I did want to edit the settings for it just for this toolpath instance and not permanently edit the tool database entry for it, I can click edit here and I can change this past steps, for example, to 0.25, which is what I want for this one. The rest of the settings I'm happy with, I'm just going to click OK. And then we need to have a look at this option here for the machining limit boundary. So we have the option for model boundary, material boundary, selected vector or selected level. Now in this case, we've gone to the trouble of making these vectors. So we're actually going to take advantage of those and use those vectors. So let's put selected vectors and we've got our vectors selected here in pink. So you can see those in the background there. And that is going to limit our machining to those vectors. So what will happen is the center of the tool will go up to uh, this edge here and it will machine up to that edge so we get a nice lovely smooth finish. In regards to boundary offset, we don't want one because we want the tool to go up to that edge or the center of the tool to go up to that edge and no further. And then for the machining allowance, I'm actually going to specify a machining allowance of 0.05. And what that will do is it will leave a virtual skin here for the finished toolpath to come in and cut away. So this just means that the rough tool will keep away from the finished surface of the part so there'll be a little bit more material left for the finishing toolpath to clear up. Next we have the roughing strategy and we've got it down to Z level or Z level. Now what's going to happen here is if I just turn on the view for the rotary view here the tool is going to come down and cut along the x-axis and then it's going to make a short rotary move which is the equivalent of the step over and then cut back along here and that's why the raster angle is set to zero. Now if you want to cut in Y, what you would do is change this to 90 degrees and what would happen is the tool would come down, rest at zero and then the spindle would actually turn all the way around as the tool engages and cuts, then it would move over in the X axis by the step over, then the spindle will spin again as the tool cuts and so forth. Now in most people's setup it would likely be a zero degrees angle if they're cutting along X for the raster and that's what I'm going to stick to in this instance. Then back in the form we're going to make sure we do a profile last and for the order we're going to go for depth first. So what that means is that the uh, cutting will take place in one region first and then when it's done that region it will move on to the next one. 
Don't need to worry about ramp plunge moves here, but I will change the name of the toolpath to 3D roughing and I can click calculate. So if we just bring this into view here, you can see this is the representation of our toolpath, but what does it actually look like when we preview it? Well, let's have a quick look. Let's click on preview selected toolpath. And you can see here that the software has actually uh, flattened the material out as if it's doing a standard three axis job and then it will actually wrap it back around again to achieve this result that you can see on the screen now. So what's actually happening here is the software still thinks of the job as a flat job and you can see this if you click this icon here to toggle the rotary view and this is how it will actually machine it but the important thing to note here is that when you come to actually save this toolpath out with an appropriate uh, wrapped rotary post processor that is where the uh, axes or the Y axis moves in this case as we're machining along X will be converted into A axis moves and that will wrap it around the cylinder to achieve this effect. Okay so I'm actually quite happy with that so now I need to have a look at creating the 2D toolpaths for the pockets. Now if you recall from the last video we had already set up our vectors for the flat regions of this design. If we just toggle the flat view here which if we turn on the vectors as well on the top left we're down this area just here just here right of the middle and just here on the far far right and you can tell we've got these orange vectors here because of our layer management to indicate those flat areas as well indeed you can also switch over to the 2d view and we can see our vectors overlapping the edge there nice and clear for us to see where we're going to machine now in order for us to create the 2d pockets what we need to do is pop over to the design tab because we're going to need to take some measurements Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go over to Edit Objects and click on this tool here, which is the Measure tool. I'm going to hover my mouse all the way down here, and we want the option to be Measure Between Two Points, so we've got that checked. And I know the highest point on my cylinder is this area just here, which is the top of the profile here, so that's where we're going to start from. I'm going to left mouse click here, and I'm going to go to the very bottom of this area here, which will be our first pocket. Now you can see the, the distance here it's saying is 1.075. So I'm going to need to make a note of that because that will be the depth for this particular pocket. So 1.075 for that first one. Again, I'm going to go to the top of this point. That's the highest point. But this time we're going to go over to this uh, pocket area or flat area. And I'm going to go down here as it snaps to it. Left mouse click. And we can see here that the Y distance is one25 so that is telling us the distance we actually need to cut down to this so 1.25 so again our note down for this area is 1.25 finally we need to do it for this area over on the right hand side here so let's left mouse click on the origin point over here because that's the highest point and we're going to go over to this point here where it snaps to and the y value in this case is 1.5 so that has given me all the measurements i need i've noted them down so i can start creating my toolpath so let's close out the measure form and let's pop back over to the toolpath menu with this command here and we can look at creating some 2D toolpaths. So it's going to pop over to my 3D view, go into the pocket toolpath and begin looking at the first pocket we're going to make. Now just briefly before we actually apply toolpath here, the reason why we're going to machine these flat areas with a 2D toolpath is because of efficiency. We can leave the 3D machining to only the areas that require 3D machining and leave the rest of it to all the flat areas to 2D machining, which is really going to make your toolpath more efficient. Now in this case, all my start depth is zero. And if you recall, I made a note earlier, which was the first measurement was uh, 1.075. And that's going to be for this vector over here. So let's select that one. And we're going to cut that down to uh, 1.075. I'm going to use a quarter inch ML. And I'm just going to check the settings for it. I'm just going to change that pass depth to 0.25. And then click OK. In this case, it will cut it down in five passes. And we're going to go for a raster in this case with an angle set to zero. And we can call this one pocket uh, one. And we'll have a profile that does its profile pass last. We can click on calculate and we can have a look. We can see that toolpath there. Let's have a look at what it looks like previewed. And there we are. Let's cut that down to the depth there. And we can now have a look at the next region. So if I just close up the form, and we'll go back into the pocket toolpath. This time we want the vector for this area just here, so I'll select this one. Now if you recall from my notes, this one was actually to 1.25. Again, we're gonna use the same settings, pocket number two, click calculate. We could preview that selected toolpath. Wonderful, that's been cut away there. And then finally, we have this final area on the right-hand side. So again, let's pop over to 
the right hand side and then we'll click on pocket with our vector selected this time from my notes I had it as 1.5 I can click on calculate and then wonderful we have all of our pockets now done and all of our flat areas machined away ready for our finishing toolpath to clean up the rest of the 3D areas. While we're actually in this view we can take a look at what this part will look like rotated currently so let's click on this icon here to look at the rotary view and you can see here this is what our part looks like currently with all the flat areas machined away. Now let's click close onto the preview form and then what we can do is look at creating our finishing toolpath. So I'm going to come up here to click on 3D finishing toolpath and then I'm going to go back to my flat view for just a moment and I'm going to turn on my vectors. Now what we're actually going to need here is our 3D boundary vectors. You recall in the last video we had made a layer for our 3D boundary which was in green and you can see the vectors here so I'm just going to left mouse click on my first vector on the left here, hold shift and then left mouse click on the second vector for my 3D boundary area and then these are my vectors to now machine with. You can see the tool I've currently got selected is a ball nose uh, or an eighth inch ball nose and I don't actually want that tool, I want a slightly larger tool. So I'm going to click on remove, click on select and I'm going to use a quarter inch ball nose and these are safe and sound for my machine currently but do double check that they are safe and sound for your machine. I'm going to click on select because that's the tool I need. In this case we're going to use the selected vectors that we've set up to machine inside of those vectors only and we're not going to use a boundary offset as we want in the middle of the tool to go up to that edge but not over it and we're going to use a raster strategy in this case with zero degrees as we discussed earlier we can call this one 3d finish and i can click on calculate now the software is going to take just a moment to calculate this toolpath and there we are you can see currently in the flat view what it looks like but let's have a look at what the preview does to this toolpath so you can see there now much of the detail is now popping through after being machined away as those flat areas are becoming nice and curved there so that area is looking much better and then on the right hand side here only the area that we had selected has been machined and let's have a look at what it looks like as a rotated part wonderful that is our finished uh, spindle for our rotary project for the moment and that brings us to the close of this video however we're going to make another video that is linked to this one that is going to cover making some uh, interesting shapes with this area over here and in the middle here using another tool so I highly recommend you check out the next video in the series and of course we look forward to seeing you in that next video